Welcome to Beauty and the Brain with your hosts, Dr. Chris Crowley and nurse practitioner Jerry Drinker. Get ready to dive into the latest in revolutionary treatments, cutting edge devices, and wellness secrets. Whether you're a consumer or provider, we're here to empower you at the forefront of beauty and aesthetics. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Crowley. Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Brain, the podcast where we discuss all things aesthetic. And I'm Jerry Drinkard, family nurse practitioner, and together, Chris and I own Skin and Tonic, a med spa located in Pace, Florida. And today, we're so happy to be joined by a very special guest. We have Ms. Libby here with us today, and we're going to be talking about lots of fun and exciting things. Yeah, thank you for joining us. We have uh, Libby Petrucci. She is a a lot of things. So, oh, okay. a mom. <laughs> And um, we have baby Luca here with us on set today. Yes, and, he might make an appearance. Yeah, maybe. That's my <laughs> my actual favorite part of the day. I said he should be sitting here with me, and I'll probably have him before the episode's over. But um, and she's also a certified personal trainer, uh, fitness and nutrition expert, a reality uh, show star. You've been on a couple of reality shows. And uh, it's really been a pleasure to get to know you a little bit, and uh, especially baby Luca. And thank you just for joining us today. So we have a really, really exciting show. We're going to be talking about um, some fitness and lifestyle things, and especially some things that may be of interest for um, our moms to be out there for our pregnant patients, right? And you have a lot of uh, exciting uh, information to share and things about, you know, just fitness and staying in shape and how to be, keep yourself in that optimal condition while you're pregnant. Yeah, and definitely. I learned so much the past nine months and now my baby is two and a half months old so i've learned so much about it but also have helped a lot of ladies through that journey while i was going through it myself so i'm excited to share that information with with all of your listeners and with y'all too great yeah you have a fitness app for, i do for pregnant women mm-hmm. um, yeah for pregnant and not pregnant women really just anybody but it's with. safe for pregnant women which i think is one of the keys right because there's so right. many things that may not be safe to do when you're pregnant and i think that's right. great that you've developed a whole program around yeah what you can do yes that's something key i think that a lot of ladies don't exercise during pregnancy because they're so fearful of hurting themselves or hurting their babies so but exercise really is one of the best things for you while you're pregnant. It helped me so much during labor and during my pregnancy. So I have a lot of workouts and a lot of exercises that are really helpful for them and to keep them just moving throughout their pregnancy. I followed your fitness journey, your pregnancy online, and it was pretty intense. And so I think that um you know, being able to just safely do these things doesn't mean that they start during the midst of their pregnancy. And so, um, just like with our our skin stuff, a lot of times you kind of have to start start safely and be sure to do things the appropriate way, and that's where you play a role for. Them, so. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like just like with anything you do, especially when it comes to wellness, beauty, fitness, you can't just go and jump in, meet, like just jump in the ocean. You have to kind of learn how to swim before you do it. And I think that. Um, I think that that's the key with like fitness. You have to learn the basics with beauty and with everything when it comes to skin, you kind of have to start small and work your way up into intensity. And, um, and so I like that, that comparison because it's, it's true. I I think that people kind of get so, uh, so afraid of doing it. And that's why you, they have experts like you, experts like me to help them along the way. Some of your eight month workouts would have taken me out. (laughs) (laughs) I was, I'd watch a lot of Chris. I'd be like, can you believe she's doing it? So it, we were, we were impressed from our couch. <laughs> yes, we, we really were. So let's just talk a little bit about your background and how you got into fitness. Like what, what sparked your, has this been always an interest of yours? Definitely not. No. Workouts and exercise. I mean, going into it, like, of course, when you're in school and everything, you're in like athletics and then. In college, it's kind of the cool thing to try and work out and do stuff, but I wasn't any, I wasn't serious about it. It all started really when I was working at Disney World and I was kind of like on my own in this adult life of a full-time job and stuff. And I got very into how I looked and I kind of developed an eating disorder first. And so I lost a lot of muscle. I was so intense about what I eat, how many miles I ran, how much I worked out. Like I was keeping track of it and got way too obsessed. 
And so when I started to see myself get very, very small and started to like people almost started to treat me like I was really weak when I thought I was really strong, it made me look at myself and say, okay, am I really strong or what's going on with me? Am I mentally tough? And I wasn't. And so it started really where I wanted to be mentally strong. So fitness really started with my inner beauty and my inner strength because I wanted to learn more about how how to get stronger. I didn't want people to see me as weak. And then also putting myself in this position of like getting a better relationship with food and, and you know, like getting a better relationship with lifting weights and building muscle. And it was all about that aspect and that journey. And that sparked me learning a little bit more in like group training and personally training because just I got more confident in that. And so I found this love for helping others that were more insecure about fitness. And it helped me to love fitness more and get excited about working out because I knew I could also help others. And so it it just kind of sparked then when I was about 21. And now I've been as active as ever. And I'm 31. So past 10 years. And you look amazing. So Thank right. you. Uh, Thank you. But it's really interesting to kind of hear that that story. I'm almost 50 and have been through all of this journey with my weight over the years, up and down 40 or 50 pounds from time to time. Just hearing you say that, it it, it rings true because, um, I, and I'm in one of those phases right now, Jerry can tell you, like I get almost obsessed with like the number of calories and how thin I can get. And I don't think about the way it looks. And I've been really thin before, um, you, you know, down uh, more than almost 30 pounds thinner than what I am now. Oh, wow. And uh, you could see a lot of bones and it was almost like an eating disorder, but I loved it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it, it gave me a sense of control. Right. And so I, I really would get obsessed with the numbers or the calories and like, how thin can I get? Right. And I think that can be unhealthy. Oh, 100%. It's one of those things where it, it almost messes with you where like, for me, I would be at a restaurant and I would take like two bites of something that I was like, oh, this is so good. I'm, I'm scared I'm going to finish it. The waiter would come by and be like, how's everything? And I would say, oh, I'm good. I, you can take this now. And like, like I didn't want it anymore. And I got to where this like relationship was like, oh, I loved it. I want one bite and then I'm done. Like, that's good. And I did love seeing myself lose so much weight and, yeah. and all of this. But then at the same time, I really wasn't happy because all I could think about was how I was going to eat at the next meal or how I was going to not be in front of food and and everything like it was just this like awful relationship that I had with my everyday life. And so I think that more knowledge and more education came more confidence in what fitness can do for me health wise and not necessarily burning calories and intaking calories, but gaining muscle and gaining confidence. And I just felt so much better about myself after that. It was almost like a sigh of relief. But it is that sense of control. And that's where I think that when I was 21 on my own for the first time, that was the thing that I could control. I feel these days it's a lot easier when you hear people go through those things and say, I can control other things in a more healthy way. And the longevity aspect, the beauty aspect of things, like my skin started turning out better, my hair grew grew better. I feel like like I wouldn't have got, been able to get pregnant if I was not eating, you know, like things like that. I, and the energy, I just, I feel like now all of the relationship and everything with food and with exercise is a lot more healthy. Well, certainly um, we're going to delve into those beauty aspects in a little bit because that's really important to us and our industry and our business. And um, But uh, let's talk a little bit about your experience on some of the reality shows because I know a lot of our listeners and a lot of your followers They love to hear about that, right? You can't talk about it enough. You probably get asked everywhere you go. I know, and I love it. Honestly, it's like, it's crazy. I think that reality TV has such this like, there's like always that curtain of people like, okay, can you like, can you remove the curtain a little bit? Tell us like behind the scenes. Tell us like, how is this real? Is this like, do they sneak you snacks? Kind of like Disney. Yeah, exactly. I know. Oh, my favorite place. I love it. My first experience was Survivor. I had done a few like little bits and pieces for Travel Channel and stuff, but my first real reality TV show was Survivor. And I got on that with like very, like I had no idea that that was even in my plan. Like I was like, whoa, what is this? I haven't even watched like enough to know. And then when I first got introduced to the idea of being on it, then I became obsessed with the show and watched everything. 
Um, Survivor is so intense. It's so real. There is nothing fake about your experience out there when it comes to eating, when it comes to having to build a build a shelter, when it comes to having to build fire. Like I remember nights that our fire would go out and we would just be like, like it's almost like you're closing your eyes. You're looking for the flint and like that's all you see. Like you just see black. And it was just, it was crazy to me. I was like, this isn't real, right? Like I would look at the producer that would be like our night producer. Be like, can you shine your, I know you have flashlight. Like, can you just, we just need to look for the fire. And he's just like, nope. And so for our listeners you know, that may not know, can you say where you were, where, where did you film it? Oh yeah, we filmed it in Fiji. Yeah, we filmed it in and the so Bobanuka Islands. that's got to be such like a oh, beautiful place, right? Humorous. Yes. <laughs> Both survival shows I filmed in Fiji. And one was, one was actually like Survivor, I would say it was more of a paradise feel. It, I mean, it didn't like, it wasn't actually paradise for me, but it did feel like it. And the other show was not like paradise. It was like the other side of Fiji, like the dark side of Fiji. I'm <laughs> like, wait, can I go to the other island? This would be great. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, Fiji has lots of coconuts. And when you're there on a certain, certain part of the year, it has a lot of like papaya and a lot of fish and the ocean's beautiful. Fiji will always have a piece of, a piece of me, literally like lots of tears and lots of things in Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> so where were you in your, you know, fitness and health journey at the time you um, first joined the show? So Survivor, I I was like recovering with my eating disorder and with like what we like to call athletic anorexia. I mean, we like the people that I talk to that can relate to it because it's like how many calories you intake, you want to burn that many. So I don't know if that's a clinic, like if that's like an actual term, but that's what I call it. Um, so I was kind of recovering from that. I was in a very weird place with like myself. I was tr just still trying to find myself. I was going through some family drama career wise. I had just graduated college. And so I really didn't have this like career plan. But with like my fitness and everything, that was like my thing. Like I was like, OK, I may not know my career. I may not know this, but I do know that I love to work out and I love to eat healthy. And so that was like where I thrived. I had so many ideas of what I wanted to do with myself. And like the day that I got voted out, even though I lost 15 pounds, I was so like, you'll, you'll understand, like I was so shredded. So I looked in the mirror, I was like, oh my gosh, like I have never seen abs like this in my life. So like, of course I ate an entire pizza, French fries and a peanut butter sandwich when I got out. Of, but then like I woke up the next morning and I was like running, doing pushups, eating oatmeal with walnuts and raspberries. I was like, Y'all, I got to keep this six pack. Like, I don't know about you, but I just worked 25 days for this thing. And so I'm just like, <laughs> I'm going to keep it. It did not stay. That's not how starvation works. <laughs> but I learned that the hard way. I was like, wait, I'm literally not eating any chocolate right now, what I should be. And I'm still like losing my six pack. What the heck? But that's because you don't starve yourself to get six pack, people. This just doesn't <laughs> work like that. <laughs> <laughs> how did transitioning from the reality show did you go straight from that into the the other show or did you no i played survivor and i was 24 and it aired when i was 25 and then i filmed fight to survive the more intense survival show that was like fighting and it was with other reality show stars like naked and afraid alone survivor and ninja warrior I filmed that when I was 30. I had turned 30 on the show. That was five years later. And yeah, it was it was crazy. And, you know, I think that when it comes to reality TV, one thing, like when you experience it once, it, it sort of feels the same way. Um, and And you kind of learn this part about yourself where like you haven't really seen, even though it's reality TV, you start to learn this like side of yourself that you want people to see. But like, I, how do I explain it? Like, I feel like you always have to go into reality shows like you've done it once before, even if it's your first time. You want to like kind of think like, OK, what what did I what do I want to tell myself not to forget to do? Or like when I watch back, I don't want to say like, oh, you should have done this. Even though you always do. So I think that like with reality shows, it kind of taught me to go into anything like that, try and act like it's your second time. Like it's not your first time. Any procedure that you do or any fitness, any workout, whatever, 
I feel like it's your second time you've done it. Lucas throwing a wrench in your plan there, yeah, right? Yeah, true. That's for sure. <laughs> He's definitely my first child. <laughs> first time I've ever done this. <laughs> and I will gladly tell people that so that way they know. <laughs> so I think that's like a really good um, kind of launch point for us to talk about your fitness app and your programs for uh, for everybody, really, but specifically for pregnant women. So this is your first time doing that. Yes. So did this idea that you have, let's approach things like we've done it before, did it influence how you developed the app, how you developed your fitness program? Totally. Yeah, I I love that question. And yeah, it definitely did. Because when it comes to fitness apps and programs, some people like want an easy fix. And these like six week challenges and especially going into the new year with like all these new fitness goals, everybody sets in January and February and like, OK, health goals and stuff. Those are all really great, but how do you keep it sustainable? And how do you um, how do you make sure that it's in November? You can look back and say, "I started in January and I've lost this much, or I've gained this much muscle, and like this year was a game changer for me." It's sustainability, and so that's when I creating the app. That's kind of what I think about. It's like developing a healthy relationship with exercise and with fitness. I don't want it to be something that you're like, oh. I hate going into it. I mean, maybe a little bit, but like not a lot. Like I want you to be like, oh yeah, this first workout, not a problem. Second workout, getting better. Third workout, okay, I can do this. And like, and that's kind of how I approach the app. And with the pregnancy program, I developed the workouts according to trimesters so that in your first trimester, you want to keep like keep remembering that or um, keep in mind that you want to keep up your strength training and you want to keep your core trained strong because in your second trimester, your core is not going to be as strong because your baby is growing. And But you want to still be able to know how to control it and still be able to lift heavier weights. And then that third trimester, you are working on flexibility and everything. So in your first and second trimester, if you weren't working on flexibility in your third, you really have to work on flexibility. You might not be as flexible. So it's like all of these things that add into that you have to think ahead. And so thinking like I've done it before, it was like one of those things where I had to picture myself in my third trimester, even though I was in my first trimester creating the program. Like, okay, what do I want to make sure I keep in mind? And how do you think that, I mean, you created the program and certainly you're sharing a lot of personal information, but you lived this, you went through this. So you're not just like, creating something and telling other people what to do. We we saw you throughout that and you literally were working out right up until the time you got, uh, maybe even the day before, the day, right? The day of, the, the day, day of. of. Yeah, induction day. I did a nice, good workout. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so how do you think that that helped you in the actual labor and delivery process and your recovery from that and like bouncing right back? Because I want to, you know, you tell me that first and I'll tell you the next question. Okay, <laughs> yes. So I... And Stephen was my biggest fan, my husband. I am so proud of myself during my induction day because it really was one of those days where I was so scared, so nervous. I could not even imagine. I was like, I don't know how a child is supposed to come out of me. I still like that that just <laughs> idea didn't like comprehend. Um, but I got induced at like 5 p.m. and had him at 6.30 a.m. And I only pushed for 15 minutes. And I think that what my body was was going through was something that like workouts and things like that really prepared me for. I was able to really control my breathing during my, during my contractions that like even though they were painful, it was something that like right when they were over, I wasn't out of breath. I wasn't sweating. It was like one of those things where I knew I was able to control my breath and know how my body was responding. I knew how to engage my core. And whenever it came time to um, like push my hips up so that they could change things out and do all this weird stuff. They were like, how are you able to do this right now? And I was like, no, you're just asking me to like do this and I'm able to do it. And so I think that it was because my body had been under stress at this weight and like um, while a baby was inside of me that like at the, at the time where it really counted, it was able to follow through with those movements and things. Um, and then also when I was pushing, you're, you're very, you're much more in control of your body when you know how to control certain muscle groups and when they call it mind to muscle connection during exercise. And that's kind of like what I kept in mind. I did have an epidural, bless it, because <laughs> I don't know how those women don't go through it with an epidural, 
but I was still able to feel my body and my lower half and like and when I when it came time to push they had to like stop me because the doctor hadn't been in there yet and they're like wait 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 like don't breathe don't do anything like hold them in there and I'm like oh, you're telling me what <laughs> but yeah like I think that what you learn through exercise mind to muscle connection breath and and core connection all of that during my during your pregnancy and I have that all in my pregnancy app uh, it helps so much with delivery and and then that next day of recovery. So it all. Well, that was my next question is, oh, yeah. How did you recover from this process? Because I know we saw you really soon mm -hmm. after that. Like yeah. I first met Luca when he was just a week or two old, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, was, it was like very soon, um, two weeks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we know a lot of moms that are, um, I don't I want to say overly protective. Everybody has their own parenting strategy. And I'm certainly not um, judging what's right or wrong. But I definitely love your style of we're not going to like put the baby in a bubble right. and protect it from everything around it. It's like we're going to make reasonable precautions, but we're also going to go out and he's a survivor life. baby. He's a survivor baby, right? He's a survivor baby. <laughs> he, he, and he's tr his training starts now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he is fearless. We do tummy time a lot, like little planks. But my fear of having postpartum depression was one of those things where I was like, Okay, I'm, I don't, I'm not surrounded by a ton of friends. We're in this, and we're in a town that we don't have, we don't know a lot of people in, and so I knew I wasn't going to be going out a lot. So one of the things that I had to make sure that mentally I was more open to doing things, going out, and and bringing him with me because I was learning. Like, of course, on the way to y'all, he had the hiccups, and I pulled over, and I was like, okay, is he okay? Is he alive? But I mean, those are little things that you just learn and. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't want to live in fear with him. I wanted to be able to be brave and, and take him with me and him being able to just, I guess, like, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Be able to adjust around people. And then the recovery aspect, like being able to move and lift things and stuff. Obviously you need to follow your doctor's instructions. I'm no doctor. And so I can't tell you, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. But for me, I felt very comfortable in walking and doing things even the next day uh, when we got home. And I think that also has to be has to do with like the muscle mass that you have in your body and how you are able to just the strength that you have in, in other ways to support what's the weakest part of your body right now and which is your pelvic floor. And so I did a lot of squats. I did a lot of things where um, I feel like that helped me a lot with my recovery. You mentioned early and uh, it, this is definitely something we want to get to is the connection between uh the way that that you feel with your dietary changes when you're control of things and your nutrition your exercise and the way that translates into beauty or perceived beauty i mean i know we all have different things that we perceive as beauty um you know when you were at your thinnest did you look and think like i'm beautiful like i love that did you feel kind of, no. no so you're just thin. you just like this so okay part of me was like when I would put on my ball gowns to go and work and I was wearing the smallest and I would put it on and I would see like abs, I would be like, oh, heck yeah, like this is cool. And and like everybody in the dressing rooms and everything would always be like, like ask me for fitness advice. And I mean, I just ran all the time, you know, and I did I did lift weights, but I was scared to lift too heavy because I didn't want to get bulky. And my arms were so small and like my gloves would just like fall down on me and, and things when I would perform. And, and it just was like one of those things where I kept seeing like I would see myself thin, but I wouldn't see myself as beautiful. And then I would also still think about not eating this because it would make me like not thin anymore. And I'm like, that's just silly. It's not how, it's not how it works. And I think that I just had this lack of confidence because I had this lack of knowledge. And um, and I think that now, even though, of course, I'm not 113 pounds, but I feel way more confident and excited to do things, excited to eat all the time. And also just like it gets me more motivated to do bigger things because I know I can handle it. I don't think that like when, when you're like going overboard and extreme, you don't think you can handle all those crazy things, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, you're absolutely gorgeous. To me, you have a glow to you, so whatever you're doing is working. I just think that, like, a lot of the things that you've talked about is, like, the external health, not necessarily external beauty. Like, And I love that 
that's what you've really focused on. You focused your app on, you focused your life on once you like have recovered from, you know, your, your eating disorder. And we talk about this in the clinic with patients almost on a daily basis. And it's, I, I feel like a psychiatrist a lot of times um, when people sit in our chair because people really come to us and they trust you and just like your, your customers, your clients, you know, they want you to develop that trust with someone then I feel like it's our responsibility to get them in a better place mentally. And that's so important to me. I certainly love doing talks and fillers and lasers and all of that. But at the end of the day, we want people to be healthy from like a mental standpoint. Right. And so, you know, I think the physical things that you're doing and the instructions that you're giving, that's really what it leads to is a holistic health. Yeah. Does your app, do you incorporate any type of mental exercises or yeah I think that the mental part of it I do talk about I probably should highlight it more which I can always add to it because I think that when I was one-on-one training full-time without my app that was something that really did not only help my clients so much but when it helped me want to be better and um and train more because I was like wow this like she just got her first box jump and it may have not been that high, but she felt so confident to jump on a box and land and her joy and the joy that she like expressed from her like heart into her eyes and just like, oh my gosh, she wanted to keep working out. Literally just like, I will never forget that moment. And she was so excited. And I think that that has to do with like, that can be compared to like literally all the things like wanting to take a picture you know like I feel like a lot of women who go into aesthetics and things like that don't really like to take pictures of themselves or put tons of uh, filters on their face and and all this other stuff but like you see someone walk around with no makeup on and want to take a picture of themselves for the first time and you're like wait I just I just did that like I helped with that and it gives them this confidence to just go about and do so many other things I think that incorporating that more into my app would be super beneficial. So I love that idea. I can definitely do stuff like that. With my pregnancy app or the pregnancy program part of it, I do incorporate more uh, about the education and the knowledge of doing that because it's it's good to know that you're not just doing this for yourself. You're doing this for your baby and you're doing this for your partner because if you're not able to walk around the next day and or like in the next two, three weeks, you're still in bed, you're depressed. Not only is this bad for you, it's bad for your baby and it's bad for your partner because it just, it doesn't work, you know? And so I think that that level of fitness, that level of movement and exercise is just important for everybody in your family. And um, so I talk about that part in my app. Can you share with us a little bit about your skincare and your beauty routine now? Yes, I love skincare. I love beauty. I love makeup. I don't wear it often anymore right now, um, but I I think that like one of the things that like every time I post on Instagram, um, like my skincare routine or doing something at night, everybody like responds to it because they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, because I feel like my skin has gotten so much better through my pregnancy. I used to have really bad acne when I was on birth control and I got off of it, it got even worse for a little bit. And then... Um, I started like actually going to an esthetician in Nashville and I started like taking care of my skin and actually intentionally doing th- certain things. And then it started to change. I feel like people like will just like kind of skip over it and try all these certain products and just like maybe put it on one day and expect like a quick fix. And it just doesn't work that way. So with my skincare, I like the first thing I have to do is clean it twice like I think that everything starts with a clean face like you have to clean you have to take off your makeup you have to clean your face in the morning even if you didn't wear makeup the day before I feel like people don't think that like oh I didn't wear makeup I don't need to clean it but like that's so important so I always clean my face twice I don't use any sort of random scrubber or anything like that Um, but I do use the like towels from Amazon the like single-use towels um, because I think that that was another thing my sister introduced this to me. Um, and then I'll put on, um, I'll put on a very light serum first, like a hyaluronic acid. And then sometimes I'll use retinol at night, um, and then a vitamin C serum. And then I'll use a night cream or, um, 
like in the during the day out I might just do like a primer instead or like a um, SPF and then I'll start my makeup primer. Um, I use, I don't really wear a lot of makeup right now. And I think that that's helped a lot with my breakouts and stuff. And during my pregnancy, I really didn't either because I work from home. So unless I'm doing, I'm filming something, then I don't really wear a lot of makeup, but. You don't really have to. We've seen you with and with <laughs> and without. And so. Thank you're you. Very fortunate. And we'd, we'd love to see that you like really started like taking care of your skin just like you take care of your body and oh my gosh it makes you feel good it does and what the facial that i got from Lindsay the first time i was like this is the best facial uh, i've ever had and i like I, I used to do in nashville my esthetician she was so cool she did these like things um where okay y'all y'all gotta tell me what this is but it was like a um a mask that she put over my lips and over my eyes, it dried, and then she, like, pulled it off. Yeah, there's a lot of different kind of masks they actually have. Oh, like, okay. Placenta masks. And like, what? Are, yeah, they make oh them my from, like, different sorts of placenta. We used to do a sheep placenta one for a what? while. That's they have, like, growth crazy. factors in them. Oh and so there's God. a lot of different ones that okay. can, like. I don't want to try that. I mean, I didn't say about, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, then they like get, you know pull them off so that they get kind of plasticized in a way, and they're always kind of cool. They actually have some that even have gold in them and different things. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's what I got. Um, a place called Skin Farm. They do the gold. Um, what's it? Where they like take your blood, and then they reinject the things, and then they put it with a gold needle or something like that. Yep. I did those. That helped. Oh, that was crazy. That that always made me like feel like crazy glow. Um, very expensive, but yeah. it was the gold ones are usually pricey. Yeah. It's like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, but I mean, I got I stayed golden for like a good like two months. Like yeah. it was like I kept getting compliments, and I was like, yo, I got a facial like two months ago. But cool, I'll take it. I think that that, and then what did I get the last time I was with y'all? Um, so. You mentioned, and I'm sure people are curious, like why you were there. So when Luke was so young and, oh, um, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you were kind enough to come. We had scheduled a filming day and you come and you were going to do a test. Well, but it was also a good chance for us to show that we have treatments that are safe for pregnant women and for breastfeeding women. Right. Because um, I was breastfeeding at the time as well. I still am. But but we have a lot of people that, that ask about that or they're concerned or they think there's nothing they can get. And they just think when you're you're pregnant, you have to not get anything. And it's. It's true. There's a lot of things that we don't do for pregnant women, mm -hmm. um, some of the injectables and things like that. But we also have things that are safe and effective and can give you that nice glow. Uh, you had a vitamin C facial that day. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think you did. You do the red light therapy too. I don't remember that it part. It was the thing where you. It was the needle thing. The, the micro needling. Micro needling. Um, and yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I know I got derm planning done when I was pregnant, um, and I got the like. Right before it was like right before I um had him, I guess it was the week before I went and saw y'all and I got the dermaplaning, vitamin C, glow, something. Um, but it was that new pin. The plexor plasma. Yes. Yeah, you got the plexor shower. Mm -hmm. That's what you had that day. And then we did a vitamin C serum now, I remember after mm -hmm. So that is true. Yes. And oh, how was it? I haven't seen you since then. How yeah. was it? Did oh you like gosh. it? It was I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It really worked very well. I think that I had like three days where it was like red. You were but pretty it, red when you left. Yeah, yes. I'm sure it has to do a little bit with the pregnancy part of it. I'm sure that um, my reaction may have been a little bit more extreme, but it didn't do anything that, like the postpartum part of it, but it didn't do anything crazy. And after like the that following week, I was like never wearing makeup. And I felt like everybody was like, that's not fair. How do you still have the pregnancy glow when you're not pregnant anymore? And I'm like, <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> the plexer. So, yeah, I think that that had a lot to do with it. So I can only imagine it's got to be super difficult to manage being a new mom, a career, keeping yourself in shape and looking gorgeous as always. And a so, wife. And a wife. Yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, that's also that's a that's a whole we haven't really even touched. So that's a whole another career that you have. That yeah. that's a lot to balance. It yeah, Jerry, Jerry's saying that's a whole another career. He's meaning I'm very high maintenance, and it's very hard for him to keep up with me. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it is actually a lot. And my husband tells me every day. He's like, I don't know how you do it. Like, how do you keep your composure? Like, right now he's on a work trip, so I'm taking care of Luca, taking care of our two dogs that think they are children. And, you know, it 
And then also like trying to work out, still training some women. I continue to eat healthy. I think that that's a big deal. It's easy to just grab quick things like go to McDonald's and get chicken nuggets, which I've definitely done that, you know, or like taking advantage of the time that you have and being very intentional with your things that you're doing or your tasks. That's my New Year's resolution right now is just to be more intentional with what I'm doing. If I'm feeding him, I am not multitasking. I am feeding him and I'm paying attention to him. Trying to just be a little bit more with like doing the most that I can with the time that I have, whatever I'm doing. So um, it's that's kind of like my my focus right now. Well, we know your time is very valuable and we oh, cannot thank, thank you. you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule and coming to be with us. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to put links to your apps and your programs for pregnant women all on our site. Um, definitely, you guys go and check it out. Go check out your Instagram. All of that will be easy uh, for our listeners to find. Yeah. Um, and, and we hope to have you again on soon. Oh, yeah. it's such a joy having you. Thank we appreciate you, so you taking much. time. I have loved everything that y'all have done for me so far. Like, uh, and now I can't wait to eventually get some talks with you guys because I have missed that one. Not much longer. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in for another episode of Beauty in the Brain. We look forward to seeing you all next week. See you soon. <laughs>